And he loves the house. I mean, I've talked to both of those guys already, and both of those guys that I sold your houses love it. I mean, one of them ended up being, he painted a little bit different, I mean, sure. but to each his own. So, um, you know, so both those houses, um, you know, both the clients are extremely happy, all the things that kind of come with that. And I had a pretty successful year, even during this uptrend market where everybody was fighting and fighting for deals, because I look for deals, I look for people like Donnie, I look for those kind of things. It makes a significant difference inside your real estate business. I got to say, if you don't have wholesale connections in, as a realtor, you're not much of a realtor. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Turn it up, turn it up. Welcome to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast. The tides are turning, the time is now. You're home for the mindset, methodology, and tools needed to invest in foreclosures. Don't you dare buy a house, buy a deal. You need to get into this right now. Right now, yeah. And now your host, the Foreclosure Deals Coach, Donnie Corum. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast. I am your host and Foreclosure Deals Coach, Donnie Corum. I am so excited about today's show. I, I, I know I'm excited about all of our guests, okay, but I got to tell you, the guest that you're about to hear right now is going to change your entire perspective on real estate and maybe life as a whole, okay? This Matt Mormon is on the show today, and Matt is a real estate agent in Colorado Springs, but I gotta be frank, that doesn't quite do the guy justice. Matt is a personality amongst personalities. He's got one of the largest Facebook groups in the city, Okay? He's a general badass, and he's sitting across from me right now, all grins. We're, we're at Berkshire Hathaway, okay? We are at one of the largest, prestigious real estate firms in the city, and this, I'm in a, I'm in a jacket, dress shirt, and jeans. Matt is walking up and down the hallway wearing this badass necklace and a Dennis Rodman jersey. Without further ado, make some noise out there for Mr. Matt Mormon. Hey, Donnie, how are you, buddy? Man, I am doing so well. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so excited to have you. Let's jump right in because if people don't know who you are yet, they, they're on their way. They're on their way for certain. Okay. Absolutely. L let's talk about the Matt Mormon brand. Give me a synopsis. How long you've been in real estate for how long? So it's been about three years, but, um, you know, I'm really hitting it heavy for the last year and, um, you know, things are just getting blown up and blown up. I got about five listings right now. Okay. Uh, multiple buyers We're we're moving and shanking, put one under contract yesterday. Ooh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, actually did the cat country is one of the big country, uh, stations in, uh, um, our neck of the woods. I should Showed up and sold him a um, sold him a house in a Harley Davidson on a Harley Davidson and a Michael Jordan jersey. So <laughs> I do love the the '98 Bulls, all that stuff. That was one of my favorite eras of basketball. So I I rock it sometimes, and I actually do a lot of marketing reports in old school basketball jerseys. Yes. Allen Iverson, Jordan, Rodman, you name it. I'm about to go get a Kobe here soon. Love so it, baby. I love it. So that's it's it's my brand. It's the way I like to do things. I love that. That's really the key. I was going to mention that. Like you are, you're a brand. I mean, you truly are. You're a brand here in town. Everybody Everybody knows Matt. You're, you're well liked out there, but you're unconventional, especially as it relates to Berkshire Hathaway, which is often thought of to be kind of a, a staunchy, like upscale firm. You're kind of bucking that trend on purpose, and you seem to be enjoying the ride. To what? How did you build the brand? Is it just because you don't care? Like, what, how did you get get this image and persona to, to create it? Well, I think what happened is a lot of people basically said I don't care and everything else like that. So I kind of fed into that and kind of started doing my own thing with it, and it's just turned into what I do now. Now, granted, I do have some thousand plus dollar suits. I have custom suits, sure. custom tailored suits. I know when to use those when I need them, you know, and different things like that. I play based off the individual that I'm working with. It's not necessarily, oh, I need to dress in plastic shoes every day and all the things that a traditional real estate agent will do. Yes. I feel like it's more my style and I get recognized that way. I yes. mean, I literally was at the grocery store the other day and this guy goes, Hey, wait a minute. I know you. And I said, how do you know me? He said, you're Matt Mormon. You're the guy from the four one one. You're the guy from seven one nine news. Yes. You have all these things going yes. on. She, I, like I had, this is on a regular basis at this point and it's starting to grow and grow as I, I basically it. go. I, and it's incredible. And this, this show is about the find of the five F's of foreclosure investing. Okay. So we have our, our five part series is basically for those who don't know already, it's find, figure, which is about analyzing it, 
fund, fix, and flip. But the biggest part of this is locating and acquiring deals. So to do that, you I mean, and you're you're more on the retail side, obviously, but it's working on the wholesale side too, right? I mean, you're getting offers on deals and people want to sell stuff below market. How, how's that going? How many offers do you think you're getting on people who want to talk to you about buying houses below market? Um, probably 10 a week sure. at least now, and, and that's only continuing to grow. And I also have relationships with uh, probate attorneys, yes. different things like that. And what a probate attorney is, is it individual dies in the house. The court basically selects an attorney that to basically deal with the estate and everything else like that. We kind of go through the entire process. I send CMAs out to the court. Yep. The judge approves it compared to having, you know, um, the market do that. And then I get an approved dollar amount and then I can bring those things to my investors and hopefully my investors make a lot of money in the process. I love that. And the fact that you're building these groups, I mean, obviously you got the Colorado Springs groups right now. How many people are in that 411 for the 719 group now? There's 53,000 in that one. There's 25,000 in a rental group. Uh, we're at 4,600, and I built that in one year in my Colorado real estate group. Okay. Um, inside of that, we have automation systems that are built now to where the automation systems will feed different neighborhoods, subdivisions, school districts, zip codes, military homes, golf course properties. I kind of built basically a hyper local real estate Zillow um, that's working well in the marketplace. I got to say that one of the best things I have, I can be sitting on my couch. I don't have to look anything up. I just start sending it to clients and I can do that based off my real estate website. I love that. And automations is so important because obviously it, it's to manage that group of that size. You can't be doing all this stuff manually every single day. There's just not enough time in the day, right? Sure. So we're setting up the group. Uh, walk me through that. Like what, what was the first group that you set up that really grew up big? Was that the 411 group? Well, the 411, I partnered in with another guy basically okay. because of my experience and, and everything else like that. I built 719 Network. Okay. So there's over 3,000 people in that and all this was within a year. Okay. So I have a music group for entertainment. I have a inspiration group for just basically you know inspiration people on a regular basis. I have a sports group, which is one of my more fun groups. We yes. talk we talk a lot of mess to each other. I, I welcome talk, bad you know stuff you know, people talking and everything else like that. Um, then the food guide group. So I have a Colorado Springs food guide group that's continuing to grow. And the thing about Facebook algorithms are, it takes a while to get the algorithm to start bouncing in itself. Yes. But once you get like moving to Colorado, so I, I own that group as well. So there's okay. 10,000 people in moving to Colorado. Wow. We're probably seeing about 150 leads every two days coming out of moving to Colorado for people that are looking to move into Colorado and everything else like that. And these are deals all over the state of Colorado that are now happening. That's incredible. That's incredible, man. And, and again, a lot of it though, I mean, the systems are great and the groups are a lot of fun. And I, I'm a member of pretty much all of your major groups there, so I'm, I'm definitely a fan. But I think a big part of it is the personality, right? I think in the end, the reason people are sort of attracted to your groups and the system, obviously there's a theme there, but you're again, you're a force, you're a brand in and of yourself, right? So how did you build the brand? I mean, you just kind of, you're, you're doing photos, you're doing video interviews. How did you get the word out about the groups? Well, how do groups grow? Maybe that's the question I'm looking for. How do you make a group go from, I've got zero members to 50,000 members? What, what does that, that process look like? So so the, the first step is basically getting the algorithm to start working, which is the hardest part inside of Facebook is to get people to recognize you rank in Facebook and all the things that kind of come with that. So that typically okay. happens. So they can, Facebook considers a mega group after 500 people. I got to be honest, it's not anymore. Right. Uh, 500 people is a big waste of time. So once you get into the 2000, 3000, and really when you hit in that 4,000, 5,000 number, okay. that's when things really start popping. Now, granted, if it's a specialty group, so I own Colorado Divorce Support. So I market to attorneys through divorce. I also get clients through divorce because there's two things that are guaranteed. If in a recession, one, there could be a divorce, two, somebody could die. So I deal in probate law. I deal in divorce law. So one of the things that gives me an upper hand is instead of me going to Mr. Lawyer and say, hey, Mr. Lawyer, give me deals, give me deals, give me deals. Right. I come back and say, hey, Mr. Lawyer, here's deals. Yep. So now all of a sudden I'm making that lawyer money. Yep. Instead of me basically asking, I start, I'm already sending deals to lawyers that don't even know me. I love that. And I, who the who the heck hey, can I cuss on this show? No. So okay. So <laughs> I apologize. So yeah, you cuss I on this show, okay. Too. So sometimes I cuss a little bit, a little more Joe Rogan style. But 
I don't. Yes, you can. I'm kidding. Uh, okay. So, so if I if I let a couple f bombs out, just to understand that's just who I am. So, as far as the personality, I basically realized it a lot. You know, and I think one of the biggest things, and, and Gary Keller is a brilliant man, everything else like that. But I see, I think there's a problem for young agents when okay. they read that millionaire real estate book. It says, "Don't talk about this. Don't talk about this. Don't right. talk about this. Don't Limiting. be yourself." A lot of limits. Right. There's a lot of limits inside of that. So what I found, because I tried to do that originally, I was like, "Okay, I'm going to be this." You know, let me get clean cut guy and everything. And I have this funny ass picture of me a hundred pounds heavier and everything else like that. I'm sitting there looking like, oh, here's my cute little headshot and everything. That shit didn't work for me. So (laughs) they were like, first of all, my friends were like, who is this guy? guy? Who is this guy? I'm covered. I'm covered head to toe in tattoos. I got tattoos on my booty, you know, like I did not want that visual image, but thank you. Right. Right. So I have to, I'm, I'm just covered in tattoos. So it didn't fit my personality. And you know, the right people will gravitate towards you. That's so, right. so they'll realize what you're basically doing. They'll realize what you're doing. And, and I realize there's a time and place. I mean, if I'm at a United way fundraiser, I'll make sure that, you know, I'm dressed. I got my boat shoes. I, I got great outfits. I yes. got to tell you, I got great outfits. No, you always look good, man. You always look top notch. I appreciate that. You're always, you know, you're always setting the trend. Like we were in an office space. You're the opposite. I've seen you like in a suit in like random locations. So you're always kind of dressed where you want to be. Did you plan that? Like I said, are you planning on an appearance or is it like you're not, thinking that people are going to see you is that something you I mean, contemplate in the morning when you're getting dressed I'm well like, i mean I, I'll, I'll i'll recognize my agenda i mean i you know i mean i even think about like when i go to a pool party okay. i think about the suit i have you know i got this little alligator suit with little floaties on his hands and everything else like that like like i intentionally look for statement pieces yes. to have conversations inside of myself I see that. so what that basically means is you know so i may be sitting at my harley davidson I get, I, I've already got deals coming because of that Harley of Davidson from a gas station of me sitting there and another motorcycle enthusiast, enthusiast came up. I mentioned every single person I mentioned something to, I am a real estate agent. And my typical intro question is, what do you do for a living? I love that. Because they're going to come back and ask me, what am I, what do I do for a living? Right. That and then sense. if the, and then and then it and then you're doing a very slow approach with it, and you're not basically looking like a pushy real estate agent that a lot of people can do. I, it's so true. And a lot of people come across it, like you said, the profession, real estate as a whole, has this staunchy professional thing to it. And I'm not trying to knock that. I'm part of that movement. I'm part of. I believe there's a time and place where we got to look like the doctor and lawyer pedigree, right? right? But there's if you're looking at agent attraction, you're looking at market attraction, which has been really your system in creating these giant groups like communities inside of Facebook, a lot of it has to be standing out from the masses. Why would people want to follow you or join your group if you're boring? Right, right. right. And you're the opposite of boring. Like There's nothing about you that's boring, right? So when does a conversation about the group come up? Does the group come up? Do people say, I'm in that group that you administer? Because you don't really talk about yourself in the groups, I've noticed. It's really not... I mean, <laughs> We can all tell you're the administrator, but it's not really like you're pushing that in the group, right? No, I don't. So, so like, for instance, I had a guy hit me up from the sports group and say, hey, I know you're a realtor. Well, how'd you know that? Well, I checked out your profile because you post on a regular basis and your conversation topics right. are interesting. Now, this is from my all things Colorado sports group. Okay. That's all it was. It's basically a sports group, everything. I talk about, you know, I talk a lot of shit about the Raiders. I talk, you know, and we just have fun <laughs> basically doing it. So some of that stuff is just me being me yes. and my fun self, yes. you know, and I don't know whether I'm interested interesting or not. People think I am, but I don't get that. Um, I have a lot of fun with my life. I, um, I do things the way I like to do things and, and, and it seemed to start to really pay off. Like I said, if I'm at the grocery store and people are going, I know you, things are working in the right direction. Right. Right. And remember when agents were advertising on grocery carts, right? And you think about like putting your name and face on it, it seems so (laughs) archaic and stupid now, right? right? But you're doing that like on a, like a global Facebook, it's the same kind of thing where you're trying to create a conversation about Matt Mormon and there's a lot of conversations taking place about you which obviously leads into what do you do for a living which then turns into the ability to do business right right I mean so you know I mean I, and I understand more power to the people that want to do the suit tie the whole nine yards I got suits and ties I'll put them on if I got a multi-million dollar client and they look like that you bet your ass I'm gonna look you like that where they are, right? right right but I can also say when I approach a listing when I approach a buyer when I approach those things I can utilize my social media presence for a caveat on why you would want to use me over another real estate agent as a whole. Why? Because, well, I can put you in front of 100,000 people with the touch of a button. It takes me no time to do that. I can do that. They can't. 
I, I love that. I love that. I'm going to spin off just a little bit because when our relationship started, okay, it was based on you helping to sell the properties that we were selling on the flip side, right? right. And so what a lot of agents didn't understand how to sell our product in as is condition because we knew what it was going to look like, not what it was, right? Right, right? At the moment. So that made you very different in the market. It also gave you some cool fodder to put on your Facebook presence. That was a big separation. But we've been trying to teach agents don't sell the property the way it is. Sell what it's going to be. Sell the dream, baby. Sell the dream. How did you figure that out, whereas other agents can't seem to figure it out? What, what was the difference in, the, in that, that approach that, that worked for you? Well, first of all, I, I think, I think first of all, you have to basically show somebody what it's going to look like in their head, and that way they can visualize it. The other thing, too, is you got to understand you're actually getting a deal when you're buying a f- off-market property. That's right. Compared to having to deal with Tom, Dick, Mike, Harry, the whole nine yards— you don't have to deal with it that That's way. Right. So I can get you into a home that these guys do fantastic work. Look at some of their, their previous projects. Look at the hell house, hell that. house that they did. All the things that you're getting a beautiful house. You're getting a beautiful house as a discount. You're actually going to win this way. Absolutely. That's what we've been trying to relay. But I think part of the reality is agents are used to just selling what they see. So you walk into a, cl- a house that's like 80% done, right? Which you sold a couple of ours at like 70, 80%. Shoot, done, I, right? I think one of them was like not even 50%. Done. The, the craziest thing, that 50% done one, I think I sold the last house for 285000 Do you remember? Because I, I was do. like, holy shit. This guy brought, came to me and he said, wait a minute, I need a, I need a house for 285000 I said, you must be crazy. Right. Sure enough, I find Donnie. Donnie happens to have one. Right. We got it very, very early, early. in the process. Right. It was very, I mean, we were talking, hadn't even started the construction process. Hi, this is Donnie Corum, your foreclosure deals coach. You know, one question I'm asked all the time is how do I get started in real estate investing? Here's the thing. In order to get into the game, you got to have access to the big data that drives the real estate market. After all, you wouldn't trade stocks without a trading platform, and you shouldn't get started in investing in real estate without DealHunter.io. DealHunter.io is an application that I use daily to find the best deals in the real estate market, to provide that information to my lending partner so I can fund those deals, to know how to fix those deals, to bring them in line with the market, and most importantly, how to sell those deals at a profit. So if you're looking to get started in real estate investing, head on out to dealhunter.io and sign up for a free seven-day trial of the PropStream application that'll separate you from other competitors of the real estate market. With that, this is Donnie Corum from dealhunter.io reminding you, don't buy a house buy a deal what i did and i sold that did you know i actually sold that with them not being in town and i sold it on a video i remember that i remember you said they were out of town and we were actually we closed on that side unseen right, right. he never saw it yeah That's he crazy. never saw it he never saw it until no actually he did see it r- two days before for the walkthrough right for the walk but that's still you're so far in the process now you're highly committed at that point right right and he lo- and he loves the house i mean i've talked to both of those guys already and both of those guys that i sold your houses love it i mean one of them ended up being he painted it a little bit different I mean, sure. but to each his own. So, um, you know, so both those houses, um, you know, both the clients are extremely happy, all the things that kind of come with that. And I had a pretty successful year, even during this uptrend market where everybody was fighting and fighting for deals because I look for deals. I look for people like Donnie. I look for those kind of things. It makes a significant difference inside your real estate business. I got to say, if you don't have wholesale connections in, as a realtor, you're not much of a realtor. Gosh, thank you for saying that, man, because that's the world leading to a next and, and, and vice versa guys listen this is a real estate investor show most of our listenership are people who want to start investing in real estate but i want you to listen to matt mormon right now because you want an agent in your market who's got that outstanding personality who's got an out of the box marketing strategy okay because that guy's going to put you in more investment situations than you can imagine he can help you to sell those properties before you get them done he can help you to find new deals before they hit the market right you're 
abilities right now can make me a lot of money as the investor, but you a lot of money too. So it's a very synergistic relationship that we have because we aren't real estate agents as investors usually, but we need them. But the good ones, okay? It's so important to get an agent who gets it, and you're one of the few out there that does it. I'm not trying to knock agents as a whole, but guys, pay attention. This whole staunchy personality thing that created the industry will not sustain it to the next round. You've got to figure out how the wholesale market works in order to stay in this business. So you got to partner with a good investor, in the case if you're a real estate agent, or as an investor, you need to be looking for the Matt Mormons in your local market and having these sit down and conversations. How can I benefit your business? That's the general idea of the conversation. You're here. What can I do to get you here? Well, in your world as an agent, you're looking for transaction count, right? And generally, you're either looking to buy or sell a property, right? Right. right. Have, have we helped with either side of that? Has our relationship helped you sell more yeah, properties? Yeah, both sides, both sides, and it's mutually beneficial. As far as a real estate agent, if you don't, I get, I probably have ten calls a week from investors. I don't even take them because I don't have time for them. Most of them, you know, my first question is, do you have cash? There you if, go. if the answer is no, then I don't want to deal with you. Move because, on. Yeah, there's, there's just no, there's no money for it. It's not going to work. Right. You know, you need the seasoned investors, and that's why I like working with Donnie so much. Is he actually knows what he's doing? The properties he makes money. I like the fact that he makes money. Yes. I want him to make money, and I want to make money too. That's what we're here for. Sure. Let's walk through a deal you did because you mentioned the probate thing, and I want to hop back into that a little bit. So you got a relationship with a probate attorney. Did that come from your Facebook group as well, or how do you think that relationship came to be? Uh, I met that? her at the golf course. Okay. Right, yeah. So, so I met her at the golf course. Asked her. That so was one that didn't. All right. So you're out and about doing Matt Mormon, meet somebody who's in probate attorney, doing your thing, right? You get this probate relationship. We purchased this house. Again, somebody had passed away. That's generally the nature of probate, right? We bought the property from the probate courts. Because they were designed, they had to dictate what happened to the property when it went to probate, right? We got a great deal on the price. I don't remember all the pricing. It's not even that important. But we fixed it up a little bit. And you even had some potential buyers for the property on the back end. You didn't ultimately end up selling it. But I know that you had some people who were interested in the property. You just needed the investor to kind of me to be the middleman to buy the property get it back on the market. Am I, am I, am I yeah, saying yeah, that Yeah, right? absolutely correct. And I thought I was going to actually have the sell side, the buy side, and everything else, all the sides. So, But I missed out a little bit. I'm glad they ended up getting it sold. Things worked out. So, yes. um, But that is a big part of it is basically, you know, f- utilize what you have. So if you have an individual that sell, you sell a property to, okay. there's no reason, especially with an investor, you should be starting immediately trying to find somebody to buy that property. Absolutely. There is no reason to not look at all the different avenues inside of a, a property because if they're available you should be able to use them and, and I don't understand some you know some realtors more power to them they don't work with investors I don't get it I, don't I love the hell out of the wholesale market well, I you. will eat that alive we love you too so I appreciate that so this deal that we bought from you though I mean you basically the double end of that now for those who don't understand generally when you're a real estate agent you get a buy side commission and we're not just, I mean I, I'm not an agent anymore so I can talk about what standard commission looks like right. but generally we were paying three percent on the listing side, and then as a buyer's agent bringing the buyer, you would have gotten 3% of that deal as well. But because you brought the deal and you already had the buyer, me... You basically made both sides of that deal, right? You're, you, I mean, you're, you're pocketing money all sides of this equation. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty what, freaking cool, right? Right. Isn't that the goal, right? I mean, so I don't understand. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, we, you know, I, so I, it's the way I deal with investor deals. I typically set up an entire system around them, and basically everything's already done for the investor before the investor touches it. That. So that, that that's one thing that investors should also look for is they should look for individuals that are outside the box, probate attorneys, divorce attorneys attorneys because there's all kinds of stuff that happens in life and life that, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, it's unfortunate when things happen, but when those things happen, investors have opportunities to make money. Yep. Absolutely. So, so, and obviously you want a realtor that wants to make money. You know, I I hate to tell you, I know some of these investors think that we shouldn't get paid, but I got to be honest, you're not getting my deals. (laughs) You're not getting my deals. I won't give them to you. Because I you won't even take paid. your call. Right, right. Well, and that's the thing. It's that law of scarcity, right? There's this mindset out there that there's not enough deals to go around, and in order to for me to win, you have to lose, right? When the reality is, the more we can figure out how to work together, and listen, there's some powerhouse. I mean, we have a badass team, okay, between you, me, Sarah McGarry, right. um, and, and you know, Laura, Corey, my whole operations team. What we've created here is a really badass team, but there's some other ones here in town. 
town, right, that are kind of pretty well dialed in. But look at the common theme, right? you got a bunch of people who theoretically should be competitors who have figured out how to work together and suddenly are dominating the market space. Who would have thought? Right, right. Yeah, And I think it's funny. I, I always laugh, you know, because I see a lot of hatred on social media toward oh, me. I'm sure. There is nothing that a real estate agent hates more than me. Like the official, here's my cute little tie, the here's stuff, my plastic yeah. shoes, everything else like that. And it was funny. I had one deal where this guy shows up in plastic shoes, everything else like that. I'm in like a hoodie. I just got done with the gym. I look like shit, everything else like that. And he pretty much looks at me and asks if I'm the home inspector right in front of his client to show off. And I looked at him and I said, ha, ah, no, I'm not the home inspector, but I'm the guy that's about to take this house from you. Then I proceeded to listen to him talk all kinds of mess about the house, everything else like that. Called the other agents. Said, I, hey, I said, man, I said, I have never, because here's the thing. The agents know who's in the house at the certain times, so we know who they're talking about. That's right. So without using somebody's name, all I did was come out and say, man, this guy was bashing the house. We love the house. The other agent just bashed the hell out of the house. Right. I love the house. I want the house. I will pay more money for the house. Let's get this thing done. Sure enough, my client has made over a hundred grand on that house. That's incredible. So, you know, it, 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 people, people can say what they want about me, The per, you know, but the reality is... You know, this little necklace I have here, this wasn't a cheap little necklace. So this is an actual prehistoric dinosaur shark. We're going to get a picture of that posted to the Facebook group. So you guys got to check out what he's wearing. I'm going to grab a shot of it so I don't forget right now. But yeah, this, you thing, want this thing is dope. Like, it is just dope, right? It, it Megalodon tooth with a... T- uh, uh, what is that? Turquoise? Yeah, turquoise, hand pounded copper, hand pounded silver. I love it. I, I got it, it from I got it from a hippie under a bridge in Taos, New Mexico. <laughs> so that's some weird stuff I do, you know. Like, and I love that weird stuff, you know. Like, like, and I love I love my life. At the end of the day, you should love the life you're living. Amen, brother. And if you're not loving the life you're living, you should find a way to make that happen, you know. And there were some times where I was unhappy inside of my life. I was trying to be somebody I wasn't. I can't do that. And if there's somebody that can't do be somebody they're not, it's me. I just don't know how to do it anymore. I love that. Let's dive into that a little bit more. And I don't want to get too personal with you, but you went through some pretty hard times, uh, some substance abuse stuff. You care to share like kind of what you, where, where your kind of turning point was. In, right. In right. Life? So I had a, I had like a four year period where, um, you know, just things kind of fell apart. I, I ended up on a, a lot of prescription drugs and then I had a doctor that kept feeding me those drugs, yep. feeding me those drugs. I ended up on a massive amount of Adderall, massive amount of Xanax. There's pills I didn't even know what I was taking. Wow. It, it turned into a really bad situation for me. So that was like a four year period of my life. And, um, you know, I think that uh, getting through that, I, re- I remember the f- last draw where my parents were like, they're like, dude, this is getting crazy. Yeah. I don't I don't know what's going on. So I decided to grab all my pill bottles. I threw them. I didn't just throw the bottle away because I knew that may not work. I took the caps off, threw them in the trash, took off to San Antonio, Texas, sat at the Lock and Terror Resort, which, by the way, is much better than rehab. Let me tell you. So massages, oh, yeah. great Mexican food, great pools, infinity oh, yeah. pool. So I spent a week there basically withdrawing. After the week, went and saw the doctor in Texas, opposite of what I had. And he basically said to me, no person should have the amount of drugs that you're on. Wow. So I feel like I was kind of getting fed pills. Absolutely. The medical industry is famous for this right now. Hey, right. I got Adderall like it's water. Like I've I got family members dealing with that right now. What made you want to turn around? I mean, obviously, were you an agent at that point? Did you have your real estate license? So I did have my real estate license, okay. but that was pretty much that. That was like where I say, like, I've pretty much been doing this for a year now. You've been it's, serious for a year. I've been serious for a year. So and I got about I think I'm 18 months clean now uh, off of. Uh, Adderall drugs, you know, by the grace of God, it's, Amen, it's been brother. a, it's been a huge blessing for my life and everything else that's involved in my life. And, you know, I feel clear and, um, you know, I, I don't use anything. The only thing I've used now, and I'll, I'll be frank on it. I use cannabis. That is uh, a one using, thing. That's what gets me through the day, brother. Right, right, right. Yeah, no. And it, I, I call, I call it, uh, I call it a pre-qualification for the day for real estate. So, <laughs> so, um, so that's all I use, you know, and, um, it's turned out it's a natural substance and it's turned out to be the best thing that I've ever done and um yeah i'm very blessed and um you know like i said i don't look back at that past anymore and uh, you know i'll use it to help somebody else yes because i I believe that you use your experiences and especially as i grow as a professional and i grow inside of what i'm doing i believe you can use that for the greater good of other people but i I really don't look back at my past anymore and it's just not worth my time nor should you man i mean you've come so far in the last year it's just been incredible a lot of people don't realize that you've only been in the game for three years total in one year really 
going, yeah, when I talk to them about you because your presence is so overwhelming here in our little town that's not so little here in Colorado Springs anymore, people don't realize, people are like, well, you know, this guy's been around forever. He should know better by now. Go, First of all, he just got started. The reason you think he's been around forever because he passed you in six months, right? Right. And, and you're, you're upset because he, you had so much pr- trajectory, a lot of it tied to your Facebook presence and what you've done with the marketing. I remember we first talked about the marketing system. You're a ball of energy. You've got all these incredible ideas, but it was really hard to get anything to implementation. Well, you've done it. You've implemented a bunch of these systems. The Facebook groups have grown exactly how you said they were going to. The CRM system's thrown off a whole bunch of leads. You're building the system, and now the big step I think that's going to catapult you to the next level, so watch out, Call the Springs Real Estate, okay, is this full joining of the team that we've created here at Berkshire Hathaway with the McGarry Home Team and what you're doing in acquisition, and weekly we're doing our sales meeting, we're getting together, and we're forming a plan to really take on the foreclosure market that's coming. But what's your strategy? Do you think the future of Matt Mormon is more retail, more wholesale? If you were to fast forward three years, where do you want to be? What do you think you'll be doing three years from today? Well, working directly with you would be part of it as far as in a wholesale acquisition process. Um, that's one thing I'm looking to do. I want to get back into the luxury market. Okay. So, you know, before I fell off, um, you know, even through all that, and, and I always laugh about this. I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, because my first year of real estate, I was up for, I was nominated for Keller Williams Rookie of the Year, which believe it or not, that's actually a big deal. Oh, sure it is. And it I is. showed up in tank tops and did it the way I wanted to do it. And people were just like, and there's a little bit of jealousy in that. I don't care. But what ended up, what I ended up finding out, you know, and then I ended up crashing with all the medications and everything. Sure, and so sure. now that I've been back for about a year now, I'm really starting to find out that find the right people around you that yes. you want to listen to. And I was actually thinking in my head prior to knowing I was doing a podcast, I was like, don't listen to broke people. Hey. If you want to learn business, do you call a broke person? You call a freaking person that knows what the fuck they're doing. Thank right. you. Right. So that's why I'm around Donnie. I'm around, um, you know, Berkshire Hathaway home services and, and people go, well, why'd you move to Berkshire Hathaway? way. You, you don't even fit the profile. You what's our, I, I kind of do. You're changing the profile. You're Berks, creating Berks, a new profile. Berkshire Hathaway produces baller agents that make fucking money. Amen. That's what they basically do. So I got talent all around me, you know, between Sarah McGarry and I was laughing about this. I was like, yeah, well, Berkshire Hathaway small. I was like, but we all make money. Mm-hmm. I was like, even the lower agents are making money here. It's, it's hilarious to watch. And so, you know, I mean, like I said, five listings, I don't know, that's probably 60, $70,000 is what it is. Right, right. And those are only growing. I mean, I have, I get literally calls on a daily basis. My mom wants to sell their property. Hey, I saw you on the Colorado Springs food guide. I saw you on the mood theory. I saw, you know, cause, cause here's the thing. Individuals don't really want to listen about real estate. The only time they want to talk about real estate okay. is when they are either in real estate but but the individual person is going to watch what you're doing throughout your life, Absolutely. and they gravitate towards people that are interesting. They gravitate towards yes. those kind of things. If I'm sitting there going, "Well, today in the market, Johnny, the market was, you know, we went up two points and all this shit." Nobody cares about <laughs> Nobody that cares unless about that, they're buying a house. That's right. So the way we keep engagement is: I talk to people about football. I talk to people about hockey. I talk to people about food. I talk to you're people authentic. about you're right. you. Right. For you all the time. And the- Want more of the Foreclosure Deals Coach? Hit subscribe and stay tuned for more of the mindset, methodology, and tools you'll need to invest in foreclosures. Visit foreclosuredealscoach.com and text DEAL to get a list of foreclosures in your area.